Life as the alleged leader of a worldwide cocaine trafficking gang is not easy, especially when you are simultaneously one of the most wanted men in Europe. Ridwan Tahi was both of those. He was linked to trafficking large sums of cocaine around the world. He set out to have a lot of people murdered who stood in his path and even went as far as killing a well-known Dutch journalist in broad daylight to send out a message to the rest of the world. But unfortunately for him, there was one opponent he could not manage to win from. Ridwan Tahi was born in the north of Morocco on the 20th of September in 1977. In 1980, he and his family moved to the Netherlands. It did not take long until he became a member of a street gang called the Bad Boys. This street gang was mainly focused on petty crime and very unorganised. In 1992, Tahi was prosecuted for the first time in his life. He got caught for burglaries and possession of a weapon. Two years later, 17-year-old Tahi decided to quit school and focus on the smuggling of hash. This was his first drug of choice to start with, but it did not take long before he was already taking things to the next level. That next level was cocaine. Despite his early convictions, Tahi remained under the radar for a very long time. He knew that if he wanted to make it big, he would have to remain unknown and avoid any dealings with law enforcement. It was not until 2013 that his name would pop up in a police report. The Spanish police heard his name pop up. As a fellow Moroccan was killed there in 2013, they slowly but surely started to get some information about him being a big drugs dealer. The Spanish police handed the little information they had over to the Netherlands, which was then shelved. It remained quiet for some years surrounding him, but in 2015, it all changed. Ebrahim Buzu filed a police report against Tahi and his right-hand man, Said Razuki. Buzu did so because he knew he was on Tahi's death list. Tahi wanted him dead because Buzu helped kidnap a coffee shop owner that was good friends with Tahi. 2015 was also the year in which a large group of men were arrested because of a large weapon bust. After cracking and analysing their PGB phones, it became clear that they were Tahi's accomplices. He started games to notoriety, but when the police really wanted to go after him, it was already way too late. Ridwan Tahi was so immensely rich so quickly that he could help buy his freedom. It might have been one of his smartest moves. While the police were sleeping, Tahi was building a cocaine empire that was one of the biggest in the world. From the end of 2015 on, Tahi's power and madness really started to show. He was absolutely relentless. Each and every one who stood in Tahi's way would be dealt with accordingly in his way of dealing with those kinds of people that was everything but friendly. In 2015, he ordered a spy shop employee to be killed because he thought it was not even confirmed to be true. That person gave information about him to the police. The 17th of April 2016, Samir Eragib was assassinated, also because supposedly he was talking. This horrific story is truly unbelievable. When Tahi ordered a hit on his life, Samir knew this and remained under the radar. This made Tahi furious as he lost his patience. He offered the hitmen 1 million euros to run inside Samir's house and kill his entire family since he did not want to come out himself. A few days later, Samir did exit the house. The hitmen waited and when he returned again, they shot Samir dead in his car. If you think that's terrifying enough, they did so while his seven-year-old daughter was sitting next to him. The apprehended hitman later confessed that his daughter in the car was the reason why he did not give him a final headshot. The little girl survived the attack. On the 9th of May 2016, Abdirahim Belhaj was killed. He allegedly stole two bricks of cocaine from Tahi. It was not about the value of the stolen cocaine, which was around 100,000 euros. That was chump change for Tahi. It was to show everyone else that you should not steal from him or bad things will happen. On the 8th of December 2016, Martin Koch was shot and killed in his car. Martin was a crime blogger who frequently spoke about Tahi and other criminals in his blog. He survived an explosive under his car earlier that year. On the 8th of September in Amsterdam, he was walking with someone who baited him. While they were walking, someone came up from behind and tried to shoot him through the head. The gun jammed. Martin did not even notice it. Later on that day, the job was finished. They followed Martin in his car and shot him dead. 
In January 2017, he tried to kill someone who was supposedly talking about him too. The hitmen unfortunately killed the wrong person. This mistake will be the beginning of Tahi's downfall. He was in total shock, the police of Dubai told news reporters. Dubai has been a hotspot for criminals all over the world. They all thought they could enjoy the beautiful city while simultaneously running their drug operations. But unfortunately for them, the Dubai police had been sweeping their streets clean and started a war against all criminals residing in their city. Dubai police followed more than 10 people who were allegedly in contact with Tahi. This led them to a luxury villa hideout in which Tahi could potentially be. The villa looked abandoned. All the shutters were closed. There were no cars nor was there any movements during the day. In the night time, however, there was one man who threw away the trash behind every night. This was a signal for the police that there were indeed people inside the house. But who? That was the mastermind behind the angels of death, Mr. Tahi himself. Tahi never left the property. The property had around the clock surveillance and there was only one man who would help him. This man provided him food, medicines, took out the trash and everything else Tahi needed. Once Dubai police knew for sure there was someone hiding in the house, they decided to design an operation to enter the property. Police only had a 10 year old picture of Tahi, so they were not sure what they could expect and if the person or persons they would find in the house were the ones they were looking for. Dutch news reported that he might have had surgery to change his face and appearance. Once the Dubai police squad entered, they immediately found a man. The man appeared to be in shock. He could not believe his eyes and what was happening. He immediately surrendered and did not resist arrest. The man was indeed found to be Ridwan Tahi, one of the world's most violent criminals and biggest drug traffickers. In the house, police found large amounts of money stacked under the sofas, Dutch magazines that reported on his crimes, several laptops and smartphones. At the time of his arrest, Tahi was drinking red wine and watching TV. He told the police that he was already his own prisoner, that he had no freedom and became very paranoid over the years. He was immediately extradited to the Netherlands with very tight security and a private plane that flew in a group with other planes to remain safe during the travel. After years of smuggling kilotons of drugs, killing countless people and making hundreds of millions, Ridwan Tahi finally lost the battle and found himself in a maximum security prison in the Netherlands. Now he is facing a battle against the Department of Justice in the Netherlands, who will try to pin him all on all the murders and all the cocaine that went through his hands to the streets. And the Department of Justice has someone in their corner who is very familiar with Tahi. Remember the hitman that killed the wrong person? The person that was killed was a good friend of one of Tahi's highest ranking members. He felt so bad about the identity mistake that he could not bear living with it, and he started talking to the police. Now he is the Department of Justice's biggest informant, and thus Tahi's biggest enemy ever. Tahi and his gang have already killed this informant's brother, and even his lawyer as revenge, but it was already too late. From a young kid who was involved in petty theft, to smuggling hash, to being one of the world's most vicious and dangerous cocaine smugglers, that is Tahi's story. A man that ordered hits on people's lives as if it was a cup of coffee, his road has most likely come to an end. He is facing life in maximum security prison as the evidence is stacking up against him. What do you think? Is Ridwan Tahi one of the most relentless criminals ever? Let us know in the comments.